Well, good morning. Today we're here with Michael Flaherty from Serenite Restaurant. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being here yeah, today. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little, a little bit about the restaurant. What was the impetus for this? So we're a, a, a unique restaurant. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit restaurant. Okay. Uh, where we, we're classic French, uh, you could call it fine dining, I guess. Uh, we do have white tablecloths, but still try to keep it a little yeah. bit casual. We blast. Motown and soul music and all of that. So keep with keep French the, accents. Yeah, though, yeah, right, right, right. Okay. right. Keep the energy good. Uh, but yeah, uh, but our focus is uh, we, we basically work in conjunction with the Recovery Center of Medina County, which is mm -hmm. in the same building there. Uh, and we uh, we work with uh, people in recovery. Okay. And over the course of eight months, we basically uh, train students and employ them as well. Uh, in that kind of classic French uh, culinary hospitality, and then uh, basically help set them up with jobs upon graduation. So, very cool. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it kind of came together uh, in, in, in partnership, I guess, with uh, the courts here. Uh, the Judge yeah. Kimbler, Judge Collier, Veronica Perry from uh, Adult Probation. Uh, you know, they, they basically wanted to. Uh, create a, a, another avenue for people to set sure. themselves up for success uh, uh, you know going through uh, recovery and mm -hmm. and you know but part of it is that aftercare that continuum of care after yeah uh, and you know uh, one of the one of the uh, best ways to keep that up is is through employment and uh, teaching a skill and, and sure. finding a career so. how did you get into this what is your background so I, I back in 2013 I helped to open up a restaurant in Cleveland okay. uh, called Edwin's which is sure. uh, in Shaker Square yep uh, it's a very similar concept similar model where uh, that was more focused on the reentry community and uh, uh, you know that's been a, a great success so far. It's about five and a half years ago, and graduated about, I think, up to about 350 students now. Of oh which, wow! Uh, yeah, two percent re uh, recidivism rate uh, amongst graduates. 98% uh, are still employed. Mm -hmm. uh, at the last I had checked on that. Uh, but yeah, I, I met a gentleman named Brandon Krasowski, who is the CEO and founder of Edwin's. Yeah. Uh, I was working at a place called Lavatros or Lavatro. Uh, in University Circle, which is another okay. French restaurant, and at the time Brandon was the general manager, and uh, you know he, he had this uh, he had this concept that he you know he wanted to put together that he had been working on for years called Edwin's, yeah. and uh, you know Brandon had a, a little bit of a assorted past as a, a youngster, sure. a, as did I, so we kind of hit it off on that okay. level, like we were both. You know, running around <laughs> telling stories, doing, doing stuff we weren't supposed to do. <laughs> but you know, I mean, we, who we, doesn't, really? yeah, right. But we had, we, you know, we have, we both moved beyond that, and uh, you know, no. kind of found our path through culinary and restaurants yeah. and the discipline and structure involved there, the camaraderie, uh, and then on top of it, just a, a passion for food and hospitality. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know, we just uh, we hit it off, and um, when it when it came time to actually get the doors open on the place, you know, Brandon asked me to come on board as the assistant general manager there. Yeah. So, so your background is in food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, ever since uh, you know, I think I was probably fourteen or fifteen. Really? My uh, my first job was at the Grand Market Cafe, okay. uh, which is now Amuse or Amuse, however you'd like to right. say that. Uh, so way back when, yeah, sort of. I think we have to say Amuse and Serenite. Serenite. Everything yeah. has to be the Te in Yeah, tea. well, people call it Serenite and Serenity, yeah. and it's <laughs> just like they call that Amuse, so, you know. Serenite. Lavatros, Lavatro. Yeah. yeah. So, no. Well, that's fantastic. Are, are you from Medina? Yes. So I, so I grew up in Medina. Yeah. Uh, up until uh, about, yeah. 19 or so, and I, I moved down to Washington, D.C. for a little bit, and then back to the Cleveland area. Uh, but yeah, grew up here, uh, yeah. went to, you know, St. Francis down the street from sure. kindergarten through eighth grade, and uh, Medina High School, and all that, so. What, um, how, how long has your family been in town? Like, what was, what was the draw to Medina? Uh, well, since right before I was born, uh, the, my parents, uh, they, they bought a house here in, I believe, 1980. Okay. Uh, they got married in 79, and I believe at the time, if I remember correctly, they were living in Columbus. My dad had a sales oh, okay. business. Yeah. He, was a, he was a sales rep and uh, basically started his own business here uh, called Flaherty Sales. Uh, which you know kind of bounced around it still exists it's, it's really? down yeah uh, he, there's one in, uh, around here in Columbus and Cincinnati okay uh, my cousin runs it now but uh, yeah they, they you know kind of settled in Medina here and, and so what um, so what's your passion with food what do you what do you love to cook oh geez or is it more like just give me a grilled cheese well that too but <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, we had a, had a delicious one yesterday. Uh, our chef's working on a, our, our lunch menu, and he made a, a croque monsieur, which is a, basically okay. a French ham and cheese, grilled ham and cheese sandwich nice. with nice. bechamel and gruyere. It's very rich. Totally healthy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A little bit of heartburn after that, <laughs> but it was delicious. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I've always just been drawn to it. I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going back to my childhood, you know, my dad loved to cook and my okay. mom loves to cook. Uh, so, you know, I'd wake up on, you know, Saturday morning and my dad would be like making a turkey for just no reason at all. You see, you wake up to these smells yeah. or, you know, roast beef and, you know, like on the weekends, that was a, a oh, big thing. Cool. He just loved to, loved to, you know, start early, seven, eight in the morning. Yeah. and. Uh, so I'd, I'd wake up to those smells and I'd come down and, you know, kind of help them out. And then, uh, yeah, as a, as a teenager, you know, just started uh, kind of cooking, uh, you know, my, my dad, he, he passed away when I was a teenager. So uh, with a single mom and, you know, working and going to school and all that, there was, yeah. I had a lot of time to kind of experiment in the kitchen for me and my little brother and kind of throwing things together and hey, I wonder what this tastes like and <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of jealous because me growing up you know I came downstairs to the sound of snap crackle pop right right there were no well, beautiful I mean, smells you know, I mean, maybe burnt toast yeah right yeah <laughs> so you have younger brother mm -hmm. do you guys still have like big family dinners and, or for holidays or are you for, the default for holidays cook? yeah no sometimes like Michael's on his way don't so, worry about it sometimes sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll you know be given various tasks uh, but you know I yeah I come from a big <laughs> kind of Irish Catholic family and okay. uh, yeah they, they all very um, meat and potatoes sure, uh, sure. yeah so uh, my mom and I we, we're the ones that really kind of try to push the envelope a little bit like hey why yeah. don't we try this but uh, for the most How part does that go over? Um, eh, it, not my all. family it's ham coleslaw mashed potatoes yeah That's yeah it. it's it's like generally like you know the preference is well done beef and <laughs> baked potatoes and corn uh, you know, I, I I always try to like slide things in there. I, I'll, yeah. I remember a couple years ago. I think it was um, uh, I think it was for Easter. You know, I spent like I don't know six hours making like ratatouille as like a side and brought sure. it to my aunt's house, and not one single person. Really? <laughs> my mom took a, a bite or a you know, two, bite. yeah, exactly. Oh, that's mm. really good, honey. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I've done you know I'll make Bernays sauce from scratch. You know, yeah. for for. For holidays and yeah, same thing. Nobody, just, nobody touches it. So I've given up at this point. I, I just, would. Yeah, I would. I just hang out. What do you do in your spare time if you have any? Uh, like, how, how do you, how do you get away mentally from what's a pretty intense thing that you're doing? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's uh, well, I uh, a couple of things. I, I'm uh, a musician and uh, playing a band okay, in, in Cleveland. Uh, guitar primarily. So. Yeah, I've done that for oh, 25 years now or so uh, since I started playing guitar. But uh, you know, we've gotten to uh, do some touring and play oh, some big cool. gigs. And what's the name of the band? Uh, so I had a, a band Seafair for six, seven years or so. That's um, a little bit of a break right now. We've had yeah. some people have had some children and things like that. So makes Happens. I know makes makes touring difficult. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a new one. It's called Asthma Camp, actually. It's a little bit heavier. Asthma a little camp. bit more rock and roll. Okay. Yeah, so more serious look out. stuff, emotions coming yeah, out. I don't know, but yeah, maybe. A <laughs> little bit high, uh, high energy, I guess. What would be uh, the dream tour? Oh, man. Where, where would you like to take that? I'd, I'd, Asia would be great. Like Japan. Really? Yeah, I'd love okay. to, I would love to go to Japan. Uh, and and all, the, all this is, again, kind of food driven. You know, sure. I'm big into like Thai, Vietnamese, mm -hmm. Japanese. Uh, I, I, I just I love uh, a lot of those flavors that you see that yeah. umami and the balance of sweet sour and spicy. So uh, generally, yeah, when we when we go on tour, it's like I spend all of my downtime eating. Eating. Yeah, yeah. Like I used to, you know, go to Manhattan a lot, and I just would spend all my time at different ramen shops and yeah. you know That's Vietnamese cool. places. So, I'm yeah. curious, what do you think of the different cooking shows that are on TV? I feel like food and foodies cooking shows they've exploded in, in the past five years yeah. so the food is everywhere yeah and yeah. people are really focused on it which is kind of cool yeah yeah we're definitely in that age of the celebrity chef I guess yeah and it's uh, you know on the one hand it, it's great you know because I think it's uh, it, it's broadening people's horizons a little bit mm -hmm. uh, people are being exposed to things that maybe they wouldn't have normally you right, know, right, eating, right you know brown meat and baked potatoes and corn uh, so that's that's great uh, it, it's definitely kind of shifted, uh, you know, how restaurants have to 
operate and what your approach is as well because yeah. people are you know more savvy so is it more, you know little bells and whistles that yeah. used to impress people don't Not anymore so much. <laughs> yeah. have has food become theater uh, I, I think it I think it always has been to a degree okay. Uh, you know, there, there, there's many facets to it. It's not just you know how things taste. It's you know it's a sensual thing. So it's it, it's the the aromas. It's you know the, the visual thing. Mm -hmm. You know that's the first sure. part of it. Is is in, you know how how things look on a plate and the colors pop and yeah. you know I mean if you think back to you know you know back kind of like what we do you know a little bit past that but that that classic French you know mm -hmm. you'd have these like geese that were stuffed with you know ducks that were wrapped in gold leaf and you know the you look at like some of the the classic <laughs> french stuff and it's like really ridiculous yeah there, yeah there used to be a show that we would watch it was called lords and ladles it was, these, okay. it was an irish show i think these three chefs would go to a castle mm -hmm. and they would each lift up um i don't remember what they're called the chafing dish lid thing yeah the, the um, one would be cloche. the head chef the cloche thank mm -hmm. you not the cloche. Cloche, yeah, cloche. Okay. One would be the head chef, one would be the historian, and one would be like the salvager or the collector. And they would do these recipes from early 18th century and 19th century, and some of the stuff oh, yeah. they had to cook was amazing. Like, yeah. No part went unwasted. Yeah. And it, it, you know, especially you know, you see it a lot in, in French cuisine. Yeah. Uh, but but all kinds of uh, various ethnic cuisines, you know, a, a lot of these like uh, this fancy food that we that we consider to be very uh, like hot cuisine, uh, it, you know, it basically originated as peasant food. You know, and it, it sure. was. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you look at, um, you know, we consider like pates and things like that to be very fancy and foo foo, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's organ meat. <laughs> it was, you true. know, it's, it's, That's true. it's yeah. chicken livers or it's duck livers or yeah. pork livers, and it's all That's kind of, you know, cooked and ground up and, you know, uh, pig's feet, you know, like one of my favorite dishes at Lavatross in, in Cleveland where I used to work was it was pied de cochon, which is foot of the pig. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, but it's it's all these, you know, it's taking these off cuts, these, uh, you know, what would be considered like throw away and, and finding ways to utilize that mm -hmm. and, and get every little little piece out of it, you know, it's through different techniques. That's where the technique comes in, you know, uh, like slow braising something, like okay. short ribs, for instance. You yeah. know, you go out to restaurants nowadays and you're paying 30 bucks for short ribs and you know it's viewed as being very fancy but you know really it's like a two dollar and fifty cent piece yeah. of scrap that you you know but you slow cook it for three and a half hours with you know wine and aromatics and your mirepoix and, and three and a half later three and a half hours later you know it's delicious and yeah. tender and yeah so uh, how do you how do you make pig's feet on a plate look pretty uh, well, or it, desirable? Well, it, it, what we did there was we, we would tra it, we wouldn't serve it on the hoof. So okay. we, you basically, you uh, so you, we'd slow cook them and then you, you pull the meat off like okay. a pulled pork basically. Yeah. And then we would wrap it in what's called uh, cow fat, which cow okay. fat exactly. is, it's basically like a very thin white fat that exists around the belly uh, okay. of, of an animal and it's uh i it, probably it, have some of that it, yeah, That's yeah my i think i have quite a bit yeah it's yeah. right yeah right right uh but it, we would basically shred it and then wrap it in there and okay. what it does is it kind of holds it together and then when you sear it it kind of melts away so oh, wow. okay. so it allows it to retain a shape so it looks like a fancy hot dog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but fair with, enough. with with bernays and pickled red onions and that you know haricot vert, it is delicious. Yeah. Also very rich. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for yeah. telling us about you and the restaurant, and wish you the best of luck and success. Yeah. and see where it goes. Thank you for having me. Take care.